Good morning and welcome to worship at St. James on this holiday weekend. It is the 15th Sunday after the Festival of Pentecost. It's good to be back with you after a brief vacation and a treat for me this morning to have my in-laws worshiping here. Frank and Barb Brocker, would you wave so we can recognize you? Thank you. In terms of in-laws, they're not bad. <laughs> Let us begin with words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, whose love is endless. Let us now confess our sin to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like wash. All 
all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, by the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous, receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. We pray through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. First reading is from Isaiah 35. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, 
Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. second reading is from the second chapter of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, here, have a seat, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. 
For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman with a little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his fingers in his ears. He spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephratha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealous they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. From our second lesson that Linda just read for us, these few words, So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. From James. Here ends the text. Good to be back with you this morning. We have three readings before us, and the question for us this morning is not what are we supposed to do with these three readings, but rather, what will these three readings do to us? And what is God doing in the midst of them? Stan Brown lives in Victorville, California. About three years ago, he was out taking a hike in California, and he met a man from France. The man had had a conversation with him, and the man said that his wife had just left him after many, many years of marriage, and that he was now hitchhiking across the United States. Hitchhiking across the United States, Stan said. Why, why on earth are you doing that? Because, the Frenchman said, it's either this or medication. Think about that for a moment. As you and I deal with the changes and the chances of life, with the struggles of life, 
Are there times when we too need a new perspective, need to hitchhike our way through life so that we also can be confronted with a new image, a new perspective, a new way of seeing life? I'm convinced that our three lessons this morning are all about a new perspective, a new way of seeing life, and that that's God's word for us today. An example of that is from James, our second reading today that Linda read for us. Words today about religion. Religion. What is religion? What are we supposed to do with that? How do we define it? If I ask the ushers this morning to hand out blank three by five cards to everyone and a pencil and asked you to write down your definition of Religion, what would you put down? Religion is... Would there be different answers in the congregation? You bet there would be. What is your definition of religion this morning? There are a number of possible of possibilities. Is religion a system of beliefs about God? Is religion... Um, a personal relationship with God. It's about me and God. It has nothing to do with you. Is religion about acts of love directed to our neighbor in need? Is that what religion is? Or is religion a set of rules like the Ten Commandments, like, like the golden rule, you just got to keep them all. Here's the list, just keep them and then go to bed. Is that what religion is about? And if so, is God standing at the pearly gates as some kind of IRS agent, ready to check our files, ready to see our accounting books, to see if our ledgers come true? Did you really help that person or not? Is that what religion is? Or is religion about belief only? and has nothing to do with acts? Or is it about acts, but has nothing to do with belief? Or maybe religion is, maybe religion is whatever we do at St. James on Sunday morning. Is that it? The book of James forces us to confront the question of religion. What is it about? Faith without works is dead. And instead of you and I spending all our time trying to figure out, is it action or is it belief? We are invited to go back to the preface statement that we find in James that was actually in our text last Sunday. It is a word that is the preface statement about which everything appropriate follows. And it is this. James says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Every good and perfect gift comes from above that we might be the kind of first fruits of all that God created. That's the word that comes first. That means that religion, whatever it is, it begins with gratitude. That means that wherever you hitchhike in the U.S. or hitchhike spiritually, the first stop, the necessary stop, is gratitude. That's the new perspective that James gives to us today. Whatever religion is, it begins with gratitude. Think of our first lesson today from Isaiah, the 35th chapter. The setting is that Jerusalem has been destroyed. The people have been exiled to Babylon. They wonder whether God is simply out to lunch. How could this have happened? Where is God? And there's pain, and there's depression, and there's lack of hope. And then Isaiah comes along and says, here's the word that I give to you, the word of the Lord. Listen, be strong, do not fear. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened. Then the lame will walk like a deer and the waters of the desert break forth. 
perspective that begins with gratitude. Now, you and I can leave it all right there now and go home. Or we can ask a tougher question, which is this. Is all of this about just our religious lives? Or does it actually touch on what we do outside of this building? The way we view government, the way we view community, the way we view politics, how we get along in our school systems, what we do on the street, how we interact with people. That's the tougher question. What if we begin with gratitude there as well? There's an interesting way of viewing this, and it came, I read this week, from the comedian Bill Maher. I usually don't reference Bill Maher from the pulpit. There's usually good reason for that. But rather, he said some enlightening words. He said, we in the United States are so divided that we've forgotten about this sense of gratitude and new perspective. He said, on the one side, there are sentimental patriots romanticizing our view of America. We wave the flag because America is perfect and America can do no wrong. We all know folks like that, right? But then he says, on the other hand, there are people who think that America is is irredeemable. Racist from our founding, rotten to the core, sexist and homophobic. We can't even find a host for the Oscars or for the show Jeopardy. What are we supposed to do with that? And then he gives a different perspective. And he says there are times in our life when we need to see ourselves in light of the world. We in the United States do not routinely practice honor killings and public beheadings and arrest and kill gays and lesbians and arrange for child marriages. We don't do that. There are some in the world that do. In Saudi Arabia, he reminds us, women can be jailed for doing the things that we think are routine. China rounds up people who don't fit the specific religion. More children in West Africa, in the country of Burkina Faso, don't go to school, then do go to school. 5% of those who live in Burundi have no electricity. The homicide rate in Honduras is eight times what it is in the United States. The inflation rate in Venezuela is 2,719%. In the Philippines, in the past five years, 27,000 people were murdered, were killed by the state because of some drug issue. And in North Korea and Ethiopia, people are starving to death. What is our perspective in the midst of our world? And does it begin with gratitude? Is that the perspective that it brings? Our faith is not just for this building. Our faith leads us out into the world. Whether it's as we pray for those who have dealt with the effects of the hurricane this week, or we abide with those who are exiting and have exited Afghanistan. I made a call this week to Jenica Stevenson, who works for Lutheran Community Services Northwest. I called and said, I've been hearing on the news about all the refugees coming from Afghanistan. How can we at St. James help? We at St. James have hearts filled with gratitude and we have resources. Use us. She told me that 150 refugees have been assigned to the Portland area. And I said, you mean to the Northwest? She said, no, to Portland specifically. There's a whole other group that are going to Vancouver and Seattle and elsewhere. I said, how can we help? She says, I'm going to get back to you because there are a number of ways. It could be sponsorship. It could be financial. It could be welcoming people into our own homes. I will let you know. I hung up the phone and then went online and looked at the mission statement for Lutheran Community Services Northwest, and this is what I read. 
we are grounded in the profound thankfulness for God's gracious self-giving love for all humankind revealed in the redemptive acts of Jesus Christ. Gratitude marks the way we relate to one another and to all creation. We celebrate being alive. We abound with joy. It begins with gratitude. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, we'd all be on meds. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the earth. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will not judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. 
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from You. Instill in us this Labor Day weekend the additional gift of gratitude that we might rise each day with a new perspective as we hitchhike our way through life. Lord, in Your mercy. Creator, we stand in awe of Your beautiful creation as summer turns to autumn. Sustain firefighters in Oregon and Washington and California. Bring comfort and resources to those hit by Hurricane Ida in Louisiana and the Deep South. And assist those on the East Coast as they recover from flooding. We thank You this day for the work of FEMA, assisted by Bill Herbert of this congregation. And we ask that you would walk with local agencies and houses of worship as they help those in their area. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, as ICU beds in Portland are 91% full and semi-trucks serve as morgues, be present with all medical professionals. Be on the minds of those who do not take COVID seriously. Let us gather as one community, one nation, one world to deal with this virus. Strengthen our ministry to those who live on our Portland streets as we provide food and care weekly. Lord, in your mercy. Give comfort and direction to new refugees from Afghanistan. With a spirit of gratitude, cause us to be an open door, a warm bed, a stable home for all in need. Lord, in your mercy. And as school begins, guide students and teachers and parents, bring stability and learning, bring safety and a yearning for knowledge. Guide our own Sunday school here as we begin later this month. With your hand, bring healing and wholeness to Dennis, Bill, Vicki, Bob, Joyce, Keith, Ward, and Walt as he recovers from surgery, and all those who we now name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. With gratitude, we ask your blessing upon those who prepare to wed this day. For Mary and Ethan, for Matt and Ashley, for Gregory and M Megan, and for those who were recently united in marriage, Marcus and Jamie. And we thank you today for those who have gone before us who now rest in you, David Schramm, Jean, the grandmother of Caitlin, Ron Overland, and all who we remember with joy. All these things we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace. Please be seated. Once again, a warm welcome to all of you on this Labor Day weekend, and it's a, a treat to have those who are with us for the first time, including my in-laws. Welcome to all. And my thanks to Pastor Vic and also to Pastor Patricia for stepping in at a time to provide leadership here at St. James. I'm going to ask Colin to share an announcement with us concerning the choir. Well, after over a year for all of us making our praise and worship without the services of, of a choir. Next week, we hope to bring that back into our worship lives and into our sanctuary. And to that end, our initial kind of kickoff celebration, Sue McBerry is graciously hosting a gathering of us at her home. 
uh, this coming Thursday. If anyone who perhaps not historically has had uh, involvement with the choir but has interest in doing that, you're more than welcome. Please do reach out to me or to Sue and find out more about that. I'm Colin. Colin. Okay, thanks, Ruben. You two connect afterwards? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we, ho we hope uh, those who are already uh, planning to be there, you know, we pray for their health and safety, and we're taking necessary precautions to do that, but we're very excited to look forward to bringing multiple voices and harmony into our sanctuary again. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Colin, and thank you for your leadership. What I just heard is we're all going to have dinner at Sue's house this Thursday. Is that what you heard? Yeah. <laughs> Fair trade chocolate and coffee are, uh, you can purchase in Pioneer Chapel. The coffee pot is on in there as well. And you can uh, have a cup of coffee either in the chapel or outside in the courtyard if you're more comfortable there. Sunday school begins on the 19th. Open space schedule, please notice uh, all the, the wonderful events that are occurring uh, that will begin next Sunday. And uh, we will gather here this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock for the funeral of David Schramm of our congregation. I invite you now to, uh, I invite you now to take the elements before you and prepare them for the gift of Holy Communion. Reuben, did you have one more thing? Real loud. I'm sorry? Oh, the Amundsen's. Yes. I visited them a few weeks ago in their home. Um, they, uh, Joyce is recovering and uh, Keith, is, uh, Keith is doing a good job of helping her. Please continue to keep them in prayer. Thank you. Let us hear these gifts of music.
Remain seated for the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Remembering our Lord's death and resurrection, we pray over this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your Spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this meal and fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your church, both now and forever. Amen. Please lift the bread. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night of his betrayal, took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. The body of Christ given for you. Please lift the cup. In the same manner also he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in my remembrance. The blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, remember us now in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace today and into eternal life. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love with gratitude. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.